Spring is in the air at Global Voice Broadcasting. Fresh new shows are hitting the airwaves every day. Shows about all the things that matter to you in your life. Music, fashion, celebs, and more. It's all here, and it's getting better every day. Only at Global Voice Broadcasting. Welcome to YATC Live, the show business show that brings industry pros into the hot seat to answer your questions. YATC Live is brought to you by the Young Actors Theater Camp. And now, sit back, relax, and be ready to take your craft to the next level with YATC Live. Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome and welcome. Welcome to YATC Live. We're here in studio live at the Global Voice Broadcasting Studios. In the studio with me right now, we've got Gabe. Handing out, uh, doing our, doing all the technical stuff so that we can keep our hands free, and we've got <laughs> Valerie Dor, my associate director, fabulous Valerie Dor, and our special, special, amazing guest, Ms. Andrea Marcovici. Welcome. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, that's our fabulous uh, the, the oh, studio gosh. audience that you can't see because <laughs> we don't put cameras on them. They're too beautiful. No, no, no. <laughs> but, they're, but they're there. I can, they're there. I they're, can guarantee it. You guarantee it. So um, for those of you that are here uh, listening to us on on the web as well as uh, live, we, you know, because we do this is a podcast too, so you can also catch it later if it's not live. But we have this fabulous um, uh, news uh, beginning of the show with Valerie Dor. She's gonna she's gonna give us the YATC news live right now. Take it away, Valerie. <laughs> All right, first up, our next weekend workshop will be May 30th. That'll be a casting workshop at the Cartwright Hotel in Union Square, San Francisco. It's going to be super fun. We've already sold a bunch of spots, so make sure you register if you want to be at that workshop. Um, upcoming, we also have summer camp. Session one will be at Camp Casadero. That's in Casadero, California, near Sonoma. That one has a few spots left, but if you want that one, it's June 14th through the 23rd. You should register tonight if you can. Session two is at Camp Maymac in Santa Cruz. That one is sold out, but we do have a wait list. At this point, the likelihood of getting into that session, if you're on the wait list, if you join it tonight, is about 80 to 90%. Um, but if you can do another session, we still have spots in every age group. We have at least three in every age group. So make sure you register. And then session three will be in Forest Hills, California, near Sacramento. And that one, we also have, um, we have a couple spots left, but um, so really if you want session three, you should make sure you're there. We have one of our programs, the company play will be that session. Oh, right, yeah. So you'll get to see that play. Yeah. That's gonna be super fun. It's a brand new, um, one act play that's being written for the students who have pre auditioned for that program. Okay. And um, and what are the dates of that one, Valerie? And that yes. one is July nineteenth through the 29th. Right. Okay. And session one will have Andrea, Andrea there Marcovici with us. She's going to be there. That's I'm right. I'm very much looking forward to that. And you've been a number of times in the past and come and taught at the mm -hmm. camp before. For yes, us and too. I've still come back. <laughs> <laughs> Even though exactly. I know what I know. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Lots of kids all the time. All kids, the time. kids, kids, kids. kids. They're, they're everywhere. What's the matter with kids today? <laughs> what are you going to do with kids? But they're very talented. <laughs> they are. Isn't I mean, it? they're amazing, those children that you've gathered. They're, they're so, just extraordinary. Yeah. Yeah. And, of course, some of them are teenagers. They're not actually kids. You know, right. They're not really kids. But some of the some of the really young kids that I saw were astounding. Yeah. Astounding. No, it's, it, well, that's one of the things we tell a lot of the parents when they come or when they talk about the camp. It's like, well, th the reason why, you know, we don't have a lot of problem kids at camp because these are kids that are not, like, being just dropped off or students that are not being just dropped off. And, you know, like, okay, here, you're off to camp. You're, well, you know, parents are going to go to Paris or something. You know, this is <laughs> – these are kids that usually found us, found the Young Actors Theater Camp by whatever, you know, uh, word of mouth or, you know, they found a flyer or they – uh, they find us online, yeah. Facebook. I mean, these are kids that are like, I want to go to a drama camp. I want to go, you know, to summer drama camp, and this is going to be the one. It's the Young Actors Theater Camp. It's the best one, and they've all got these amazing teachers. And so when they come, we have like a really talented kids from all around the country, and actually all around the world too. I mean, we've had mm -hmm. kids this last summer came from uh, Paris, 
Fran- uh, Paris, France. We had uh, Spain, uh, um, Peru, wow. uh, Singapore. Indonesia, yeah. Singapore, oh Hong Kong, <laughs> mainland China, Japan, Japan yeah. and uh, oh, there's Germany. One. That's, that's a lot Germany. of responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> we don't do it alone. What if you lose one? Right. Well, we've never, lo- we knock on <laughs> we wood, have, we haven't yeah. lost one yet. Of. Yeah, right? <laughs> Not that anyone's reported. <laughs> that's <Yeah>. good. <laughs> um, spoken like a true parent, though, actually. Yes, right? absolutely. <laughs> And you have a daughter, Alice. I do. And how old is Alice now? She's now 19. 19. We were discussing that on the way over, and I, I said to Valerie, I said, she has a daughter. She's like 12. Or, no, wait, you might be 13 now. And, no, yeah, and Valerie yeah. goes, I think she's almost 20. <laughs> and I was like, oh, wow, where has the time gone? Well, that's how I feel. You can imagine. <laughs> right? She's a sophomore in college. She's wow. at... Uh, Portland, Oregon. She's at Lewis and Clark, a fantastic oh school. Yeah. That's a wonderful school. a terrific school. school. Yeah. And she's very, very interested in sociology, anthropology. And she's already got a summer job. Congratulations, oh. Alice. Oh, my God. <laughs> fantastic. Is it she's up there? Or is it up, it's up there. She's doing a research project for one of her teachers. That's wonderful. I'm very impressed with her. And I just now visited her. So I spent uh, an entire weekend with her going yeah. in and out of shops and <laughs> breakfast, lunch, and dinner and oh, a fun. movie. Mm. And I miss her so much. You miss much. her, I bet. Yeah. It's terrible. <laughs> of course. Oh, um, so I think the parents of your kids are very brave to let them go <laughs> let away them go. for the summer. We do find <laughs> that there's a lot of a lot of parents uh, when they ask a lot of questions, you know. And for those parents that might be listening, we do have um, a YATC call in uh, once a week. We do a uh, that Sean Ryan, the other co-director, uh, with me that uh, does a, a weekly conference call to answer all questions for parents. So if you're interested in that, you can email us at info at campyatc.com. So that's info, I-N-F-O, at camp, C-A-M-P, Y-A-T-C, like Young Actors Theater Camp, dot com. But I must uh, say, I've never seen a happier group of children, ever. Yeah. They're really, I mean, they are. They are yeah. so into it, and they're so involved, <laughs> and they're so happy. And it's, the way you guys run the camp, it's oh, just so admirable. Oh, thank you. We you have such a way about you. It's it, terrific. It's, you know, it's been years of doing it. We've been doing it for 14 years now. Mm-hmm. Again, that goes back to, like, we're not getting any older. So <laughs> no, of course some not. No, but somehow we've been not. doing it. For, <laughs> you look Valerie, exactly the same. Valerie was a camper. Oh, were you, yeah. Valerie? Yeah. Valerie oh. started out as a camper, then was uh, came back and, and you st- actually came at fourteen or fifteen. I started at fourteen. Fourteen, yeah. And then she was been she's been. What uh, was your big song? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a singer. I did mostly acting. I think oh, it was okay. one short day. <laughs> yeah, that was the first group day. number that. Yeah. <laughs> big, yeah, from from Wicked. Yeah. Yeah. But um, she yeah did did uh, all, did summer winter then mm-hmm. came back uh, you know all through high school went off to college and would come back in the winter or the, the summers and work during the school, you know, the summer spring break or s- summer break. And, <laughs> and then now she's living here in Los Angeles. She's our associate director and running all of this for That's us. That's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love it. It's the best. Um, Absolutely. So, okay, so oh, let's see. What do we, oh, others that might want to call in or questions right now for Ms. Marcovici or I, for myself or Valerie, you can uh, tweet us. We've got at Camp YATC. Uh, or you can also send email questions to info at Camp YATC. Um, let's see, my Twitter handle is at John Ainsworth2. Valerie is V at V Dorer, D O H R E R. Yes. V Dorer. And uh, I've managed to avoid Twitter. <laughs> yes, you have. But you do have a fabulous, fabulous website with all of your information. It's marcovici.com. www.marcovici. M A R V. Oh, M A R C O V I C C I. Dot com. Well done. Thank you. It took. I and practiced. there's a Facebook. I mean, <laughs> oh I, yes, of I mean, course. I'm, I dragged myself into the 20th first century <laughs> with the right. Facebook. Speaking of, I love how you said you dragged yourself into the 20th century. Yeah, almost. I know. <laughs> Misspoke. But I, I was living in the 1800s at the time. But you were. But you have this amazing, <laughs> amazing. That that leads me into the great that I want to talk about your music because <laughs> I was telling Valerie on the way over here the shows that you do in cabaret and the albums, the numerous. Is it 20? Seven? 20. 20. 20. I think I have 20. 20 albums. I really don't know. That's <laughs> fantastic. But that some of the... I'm the part of 27. Part of 27. Okay. You know, part of 20. I was wondering I've, that's I've been involved that. in... In 27. Okay. I've I knew done I had that damage 20. to... <laughs> <laughs> but the, the treasure trove of songs and musicality and uh, stylings that you have brought are like a time capsule 
That's yeah. what I was telling Valerie. Yeah. So it's like a time yeah. capsule that you've placed in into our laps, you know, to listen to. It is so amazing. And I was telling her about Hildegard. Right. And uh, I, of course, talked about your mother, Helen. Yeah. She, <laughs> the last show that I got to see, actually, I don't know if it's the last one that I saw, but when she, you were performing here in Los Angeles at the Gardenia, and your mother got up, and the two of you sang together. Yes. Just phenomenal. And I think my mother was probably 95 at the time. <laughs> wow. That's, I think she was. I think wonderful. she was. Uh-huh. She's 96 now. 96 now. So is she mm-hmm. one of the, I would, she, probably one of the biggest influences musically for you growing up? The strongest up? influence. The strongest influence. The strongest influence, no question, because she did sing a great deal around the house, usually unbearably sad songs, but <laughs> that part of the influence I've gotten over. Sure. <laughs> the, the good part of the influence, which is the timbre of her voice, the sound of her voice, yes. and the repertoire, which was vast. I, uh, I mean, I grew up with a piano um, in the house and and pounds of sheet music, not yeah. just a few pieces here and there, but just pounds and pounds of sheet music that she had had from her career in the 1940s. And although wow. she gave it up to marry dad, she always went to singing lessons and she always took me along. She took me to the singing lessons at Carnegie Hall. Oh, wow. And it was a very thrilling experience. And in the summers, we had a summer house and she put on talent shows. <laughs> and she would always sing in the talent show and then it, as I got a little older mm-hmm. she let me be in those talent shows too see this is like camp it's and it was <laughs> I was in camp you were at summer camp would, yeah. summer camp you would but we would, yeah. I would get to do a song She's a very powerful influence, and the kind of truthful way that she sings, the the honesty that comes through, the simplicity of the arrangements, um, it's been a, a, a powerful influence. And, and also the people that she liked to listen to. Yeah. So she liked Judy, Gar- Judy Garland, so yes, I sure. did. She liked yeah. Edith Piaf and Charles Aznavour, and she liked Frank Sinatra and Ella Fitzgerald, and it, it just all, all rubbed off yeah. Yeah. as an as a growing up experience. Hmm. Uh, and then um, when you uh, so you kind of discovered your voice at an early age, being around so much music. Yes. And when did you start to realize that this was something that you wanted to do? Maybe as a profession or as a career? or Oh, when I was or, about four. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I think I sang The Man I Love at my fifth birthday party. And, and we have pictures to, to prove whom? it. To whom? Who are you <laughs> oh, to everyone. <laughs> to everyone. Okay, Just good. to everyone. I'm standing on a chair <laughs> singing at the top of my lungs. And it's just oh. so ridiculous. And, every, and all the little children just look terrified. <laughs> I want to see that photo. I wish we had oh, it's it. A, it's a, it's we'll a throw great it up on job. the. It, it's a great. Is it on your job. website? We'll have Gabe no, pull it up right no, now. No, no, no. no. <laughs> Um, no, it's one of my most embarrassing moments, I'm sure. Okay. I, I always okay. knew I wanted to sing, dance, and act. Yes. And it was just a question of what I was doing at what time. Okay. By and the time I was old enough to become a singer, I was too nervous to do it. So I went into a soap opera, Love is Many Splendid Thing, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I concentrated there. And I did uh, Broadway and off-Broadway singing. It took until 1976 before I put a nightclub act together. That was the time that I was in the front with Woody Allen. Yes. Uh Uh, Golden Golden Globe nominated, I I might add, for everyone. (laughs) Yes, I uh, was. Best acting debut. Yes, I was. Oh, that was very exciting. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that was when I went to Reno Sweeney, and I, I actually did a full-fledged nightclub act. Okay. Um, but it wasn't until maybe 1985 that I started at the Gardenia, and I began the tradition of the kinds of shows that I do, which are what you're talking about, historical cabaret, where it's all Irving Berlin or all World War II or all Jerome Kern or all... Hildegard. Hildegard. <laughs> who knew? Who yeah. knew? <laughs> who still knows? Right. <laughs> um, That's what Ru- I was... <laughs> Ruth Edding. I did a whole show about Ruth Edding, who was a star of the 1920s, and it allowed me to spend an enormous amount of time in the repertoire of the 1920s. Wow. They made a movie about her, Love Me or Leave Me. Doris Day played her. Really? Mm-hmm. Really? And that and see, that's that's what I was telling Valerie. We were talking about, like, how you come to these shows and how I wanted to pick your brain about, like, when you, how do you find someone that you want to make a show about? What is, and then you, you do this, it, for those of you that have yet to have, and you have a, a number of mm-hmm. shows that you've done over the many, many years in this art form. Yeah, about and 30. 
30 years or 30 shows. It's 30 years. That's amazing. Congratulations. It is yeah. amazing. It's, I mean, and it, Am I still walking? Yes, you are. I, I saw, did walk here under my own. You danced own. in, yeah. I danced in, didn't I? <laughs> you did. And, I mean, I for those, roller skated in. <laughs> for those that haven't seen an Andrea Marcovici show, it is this connection to the material and to the, the lyric that is so, mm-hmm. so profound. And that is what people, that if you haven't seen it, or if you, you've seen other cabaret shows, you think, okay, uh, you might think you know what cabaret is. You know, and that's another, well, there's a whole other discussion there. People that, in parts of the country, what cabaret means is completely different than oh, what it's a, scary. It's scary, yeah, especially if Some you, people think cabaret has no clothes. Exactly. That's Arizona. <laughs> that's, that's what we found is Arizona. It usually means, that, yeah. But, but here, no, what we're talking about is the actual art form, the historic art form of cabaret, of right. a nightclub act, where it's the singer, a, a chanteuse, an ingenue, a vo- you know, a... The, the chick singer, you know, right. the, that is... I love that. Right? I'll take chick singer. Chick singer, I yeah. Like it's a It's this, like, beautiful, amazing, you know, art, uh, you're connecting to the lyric and you're, you're bringing the, the audience into this, uh, this world of this artist. Right. It's a real conversation between you and the audience. And yes. And it's intimate and it's personal. There isn't any more personal art form under the sun because you've chosen everything that you're going to present that night. It's all personal to you. Every Mm. song, every word you say, every gesture, everything about it is yours. And it's especially for actors to be able to have a cabaret act separate from the work that they do as actors. That's what was so important for me. Because when I started cabaret again, I had just finished doing a TV series called Behringer's. Mm -hmm. And after a a wonderful experience of being a lead on a television series, it was suddenly canceled. And I just was so adrift. And that was when (laughs) I got a call from Tom Rolla at the Gardenia. And he said, why don't you why don't you sing? Why aren't you singing? And it was enabled. I was able to express myself consistently without waiting for the phone to ring. Mm-hmm. without having a script sent to me, without having that magic of getting a part. Yes. I became the part. Yes. I was the part. It's exactly what, we, you know, we're talking about self-producing that, you know, right. when now, especially today in this age of, you know, computers and YouTube and what we're doing right now. What we're doing right this, now. This exactly what we're doing we're right now. We're creating our own. We are. Right. You know, and we didn't we didn't sit around and wait for somebody to say, oh, we might want you to do a, a radio show. <laughs> we might want you to do a podcast or, you know, we actually have been talking about it for a couple of years and then found our way to Gabe, the fabulous Gabe, everybody on the board. Yes. Give, him a, give him a round of applause. Yay! <laughs> oh, I can't compete with that huge audience that you I draw. I know. Right. <laughs> um, but it was it was this idea of like trying to self create and bring ourselves, right. you know, and get you know show people this is what you can do if you want to do it. Just go out and do it. Don't don't sit waiting for the agent to call or, you know, because they call, but sometimes it's slower than others. And so when you have something yeah. that you're doing on a daily basis or an, on a, it, a weekly basis, it keeps me constantly interested in history, Mm. in talent, in other people's words, in life, and in progressing through this wonderful adventure that's been cabaret for 30 years. 30 years. At at some of the most... uh, And it keeps my voice in shape, too. Right. Because (laughs) there's always rehearsal. Yeah. Yeah. And I think singing is such an important thing to do. And when your kids come to camp... They don't all have to have boffo voices to enjoy it. Right. That's true. Singing is an expression that is part of what we all should do at some time, whether we're just letting it out in the shower, Mm. (laughs) just let it out occasionally. (laughs) I mean, it's just something that we should do. It's It's, such an expression. It's, you know, and it's, when you talk about, like, it's such a human expression. Yes. You know, we, we speak. Akin to screaming. Yes. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and, and it's like, but, it, you know, if you think about, you know, going back in history to caveman days, you know, it's like, this is, we have our, the only thing we have before musical instruments and, and we had our voices. Mm-hmm. The voice was the first, you the know. The voice. The voice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The voice. And now it's a TV show. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. And a rather cruel one at that. Yeah. They all can't. Yes. I, you know, it, Yes, uh, I, that one. I at least I've seen some of 
what's happening on that it has gotten better than what was being done on American Idol, which oh, I'm I sure. so I'm sure. watching that was just so t- it was terrifying. Now, at I times. just worry as a singing coach, oh, which yes. is one of the hats that I wear. I just right. worry about you know asking people to belt higher and higher yeah. and higher and higher until their voices are just going to be ruined before they're 25. Yeah, that, that's all. We just went and saw a, a cabaret. Uh, on Broadway, mm-hmm. oh. oh, it was it was lovely. <laughs> I, I, you know, I it when uh, is it Alan, still Alan coming? Still mm-hmm. Alan Isn't coming. Isn't he wonderful? He's amazing, and that was the thing. I, I you know, said in the '90s when he did it, you know, and was you know had brought it back the revival and, and won the Tony, and I missed it then. Yeah. And to have it come back again, I said, and it's getting close to the end. I said, I if I miss it, it again, time. I'm not gonna. I I would I'll you know shoot myself. Mm-hmm. I was, not really, but it was like yeah. I you know never give myself you know never forgive myself. But so we so Sean and I went to go see it. It was fabulous. fabulous. Sienna Miller uh, from American Sniper was in the Sally Bowles role. Wonderful. And that is a role that like. You, as you know, for those that don't know, it is a it is a role where the she doesn't always have to be able to sing well. She's not supposed to sing. She wasn't well. really supposed to. She wasn't yet. She was, a, but uh, Sean at the end of me said, "What did you think of her?" And I said, "I thought she was fantastic." And he goes, "I thought she was amazing too, but I felt like at times she was screaming mm-hmm. the you know the the lyric and you know trying to and over the." You know, because she's not a trained singer, maybe. Or and not. there's so much pressure to belt right. instead of, instead of um, it's a technical term that I'm talking about now, but instead of using your middle range and then getting into your head voice and strengthening your head voice. And kind of mixing. If more kids now strengthen their head voices and brought their head voice down into the middle range, mm. they'd have healthier voices. Uh, that's a very good point, and mm-hmm. that for those you know out there, I mean, uh, that's what Andrea does when she comes to camp. She works with the kids. She has to do like kind of a master class type, uh, you know, sessions with the with everybody there, uh, bringing certain kids up and getting to work with them individually, one on one. And this is all you know at, take, taking place at camp. This is part of camp. This is what we do. Right. And that's what's so it's so expensive. I mean, we special. just don't roast marshmallows no. all day. We do that too, you know. But <laughs> I yeah, mean, that go- does get done. Does get done, yes. yeah, <laughs> because that's important. It, oh yeah, s'mores. It wouldn't be camp without, without s'mores. s'mores. <laughs> <laughs> Would it? <laughs> no, and um, let's see. Never, uh, never. I'm gonna. You know what? I've been monopolizing all this time over here, Valerie. I'm gonna let you get in a little. Uh, in, in a couple of questions. <laughs> all right. Well, we have one from Twitter that just caught fabulous. Came in. From at Vic NYC fifty eight mm-hmm. said, ask Andrea to explain why the Great American Songbook is so relevant today and to young people. Thank you. Oh, well, Thank I you. happen to know at Vic <laughs> oh, d- I NYC. Love that. <laughs> uh-huh. She's one of my only friends that actually has a Twitter, a Twitter. account, <laughs> <laughs> but she's That's much great. younger than me. Much younger. Mm-hmm. Um, the um, Great American Popular Songbook, which. Sometimes when I mention it, somebody will say, little kids will say, where do I buy the book? Oh. <laughs> As if it was a, An actual book. a single book. Wouldn't One that be lovely? But it would be that so, you could buy. It would be it, it, so, it, it, so <laughs> large. <laughs> it would be a book. <laughs> it's too big to be a book. <laughs> but what it is is obviously um, the music written largely between early 1900s and approximately the 1950s or 60s, written by our heroes, Rodgers and Hammerstein, Richard Rodgers and Hart, Irving Berlin, Cole Porter, Johnny Mercer, the actual heroes of the music industry, and why these songs that have been written in the past are just so valuable today is because of, A, their sheer beauty, structure, rhyme scheme because of course the American popular songbook has to travel further to include Sondheim right, yeah. mm-hmm. um, the style of the writing was so also for me so deeply sentimental and so romantic Very. and it's something that I think we miss in today's day and age there are is a a lack of true romanticism in a lot of the music that's being written today. And there's actually some things that bother me in today's music, which is a misogyny and 
um, undervaluing women. I would believe that the old yeah. songs mm-hmm. put women on a pedestal. A pedestal, <laughs> uh, absolutely. And they were very, very beautiful about it. And it's, it's, it's actually to learn your craft, to learn your craft as a songwriter by studying the songs of the past is one thing. It's terribly important. But to learn your craft for these kids by singing songs from long ago would be very beneficial. Absolutely. Because the words are so good, because the rhymes are good, and because there's so much heart and soul yes. in the music. As, and, and, and I think it, a lot of that going back to, uh, like, the Great Wars, <laughs> you know, <laughs> the, the, that time frame, mm-hmm. you know, like, I'll be seeing you. Yes. Uh, you know, there's just, you, you get You're never going to find a more brilliant song than no. that. It's just like even thinking about it, I get it, it kind of like tear wells up, you know. Absolutely. Like it, I, I and the songs were written for the occasion. Yes. And they were written with a certain nobility and, um, and a majesty. Good, yes, and good I, words. And I'm not saying that I don't understand anything modern because it's not true. I mean, there are certain modern writers that I, that I like quite a bit, and I'm certainly not, I'm a, I, I know Stephen Schwartz. So, <laughs> right? I mean, s- certain people have been able to bring the techniques of the past into the present and do a beautiful job. And I think that's where, uh, you know, if you're studying, you know, history and the history of music and the great American songbook, and you're uh, listening to, you know, practicing with those songs, you're learning about lyric, you're learning about uh, the, the way that songs are written, mm-hmm. and you start to you know, understand, I think these, like the Stephen Schwartz, you know, the uh, Sondheim, these yeah. are people that have, that learned a certain way, oh, grew absolutely. up with a certain way, and then went out on their own and brought it into a new, a whole different level, which yeah. is, but uh, but they, they, they are, it's that standing on the shoulders of giants. Yes. You know, you're, you you would not be who we, we are today were it not for the people before us. Right. And I think that with music, that's a, that is a specific. That is so especially. And I must say, important. some of the songs written for animated films mm-hmm. obey the right principles from long ago, mm-hmm. the principles that Rodgers and Hammerstein set down. I mean, the score to Frozen is terrific. Yeah, ah. and we just had Bobby. <laughs> we and Kristen just had Bobby and Kristen Lopez come. To the Lopez is uh, they Lopez are Anderson's. very talented. <laughs> they are Spe- deeply like, talented. Very, very. And they're writing, and they come out of those workshops that are the Disney workshops that are you know Stephen Schwartz has has moderated at, and I mean these there's a whole new generation writing mm-hmm. for animation that really know their stuff. Yeah, absolutely. And it's it's very very good. Mm-hmm. I'm so excited to see what they're going to do with it when they turn it into the, the Broadway musical, too. That's yeah, be... musical they're, Frozen. They're <laughs> going to have a heck of a time with that castle. <laughs> right? I don't know how they're going to handle, how they're gonna the, handle castle. the castle. Yeah, and making it I look, can see yeah. the costumes, and I can see a few <laughs> other things, but I don't know what they're going to do for the, the castle. castle. <laughs> or maybe they'll just freeze the whole audience. Oh, there you go. Maybe. That's it. Oh, and make it snow. Air conditioning comes back. Right. <laughs> Very important in New York if you're going to be there in the summers. You need yeah. really good air conditioning. Right. So that'll be like a hot ticket to get. Yeah. <laughs> Pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. Do we have any other more uh, questions? You got it. Uh, questions, call in. We have a, we have a video. Uh, we were talking to Gabe. We have a, sh- a, a short little video um, from the Young Actors Theater Camp. It has to talk about a very serious problem. We're going to take a quick break here, and, and we'll be right back at YATC Live. Hello, I'm former child star Sean Ryan, who never actually was a child star, because like many others out there, I suffered from DKS, Drama King Syndrome, otherwise known as DQS, Drama Queen Syndrome. Do you have a child at home suffering from one of these two syndromes, or Restless Leg Syndrome? We can deal with it here at the Young Actors Theater Camp. Send us your most overdramatic, your most uncontrollable. Does your student sing wicked uncontrollably? Can you not get frozen out of your head? That's because you have a child with DQS or DKS. Order now and we'll throw in a box of samosas. The sugar probably won't help the problem, but the acting classes will. 
Dial the number at the bottom of your screen and join us this summer for the Young Actors Theater Camp and kiss DQS or DKS goodbye forever. And hello to Samosa. <laughs> yes, that's our fabulous co-director, Sean Ryan. Um, uh, doing his, yes, the it's a very public that, service announcement. That about is really hilarious. DKS very important. And DQS. That's really very funny. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> I hope that goes viral. For me you. too. Me too. That's just hysterical. Um, that that leads us into. I wanted to talk quickly about uh, Sean Ryan and the reason why he's not here with us in studio today is because he's at the Palm Beach International Film Festival in Palm Beach, Florida. Oh, some excuse. Some excuse, but he's there with a fabulous film, a wonderful short film that everyone should see called Charlie. And Andrea Mar- Marcovici plays Charlie's mother. Yes. Ta-da. Very mm-hmm. cruelly. Oh, yes. <laughs> I know every, for those of you that know, know her or listen to her now and her lovely voice and the, the, the grace with which she's been speaking to us, it's a whole different ver- version <laughs> <laughs> that she has brought to the character of Charlie's mother. Um, and and it, is, it is fierce. It is very fierce. It is amazing. The editor... Uh, Clint Carney, who edited the short film for us, actually said, um, he goes, I was, I'm afraid to meet her. <laughs> I said, oh, no, she's lovely. You're going to, but that's, that's a, yeah. a testament again to your acting. Yeah, that's good. And, and your acting is so impressive. Your acting, uh, we have, we actually, we're going to show your acting demo reel or oh, part great. of it. Uh-huh. And uh, we'll come back and we'll talk a little bit more about the, the, the wonderful, you know, you talked about the 30 years in cabaret, but you've also had a specific, very phenomenal career yeah. as an actress that we'll get to come back and talk to you uh, more about in a second. So we're going to have Gabe take it away and show uh, this acting demo reel uh, of some of her finer works from Ms. Andrea Marcovici. No, you're forcing me to be completely honest with you. In the light of day, you're gross and disgusting. <laughs> My mother didn't even care. You come from a long line of narcissists. Excuse me, this is an emergency. I need to see Dr. Campbell immediately. Uh, Dr. Campbell doesn't work nights, but I'm Dr. Bianca Vera. Can I help you? Yes, you can call Dr. Campbell and tell her that Dorothea Fremont's daughter, Camille, has a fever that does work nights. It's a... Last night, my daughter had a sore throat. This morning, she's dead, and you can't even tell me what's wrong? Camille's an alcoholic now, too? What do you hope to gain from this... This character assassination. She was taking cough syrup. It's full of alcohol. Combine that with cocaine and you get cocaethylene. It stays in your bloodstream a long time and it's toxic, especially in combination with the medication she received. It caused a fever high enough to destroy her brain. Of course. You have to smear her reputation to preserve your own. You do come from here, don't you? Yeah, I come from here, but I bummed around a lot. You know, I was a boxer and a seaman and all that stuff. You got to beat it right. What's, you don't believe me? Oh, should I? No, but I did bum around a lot. What about you? Not a lot. A you lied to me. What are you really? A druggist? You want to know what I was? I ran a cash register. You were a cashier? Oh, you... <laughs> That's exactly what I mean, see? Unless it's a writer or an artist, you know, catch you in bed with a cashier. Oh, that's not it's, fair. You, you want to look twice at me. It is not what someone does. It is who he is. It's, it's, you, don't, you don't even know who I am. Did you ever give me the chance? Amazing. Amazing. I, lo- I mean, that... What fun. What fun. <laughs> it really is. What is it? What is it? Um... It's not often we sit down and watch our own demo reels, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> Ordinarily, I would watch it like this. Like the, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I feel the same way. Um, but there was some, some really great acting, amazing acting. And, and that we were talking about the connection to the lyric. The same thing is happening where you connect with the material and you're connecting. Mm-hmm. That's how what we do as, as an actor. So being an actor or a singer is the same thing. It's the connection to that character and, and the connection with your the audience mm-hmm. or the connection with uh, the person that you're acting opposite you know that that's there's so much well the words have to come first okay I mean if you're doing a scene or you're doing a song the words have to come first and expressing those words and expressing the author's wishes that has to be number one and so truth has to come first 
Mm. And that's why sometimes when people are singing, they get too caught up in how difficult it is to produce the tone, <laughs> Right. Um, when they're they're too concentrated on their breathing, although I know breathing is important, it's it can sometimes get in the way of expressing a thought all the way to the very very end when you're trying to express a thought. It's all must come from the truth that is inside, and acting and singing are no different. Yeah, that's that's so that's that's so amazing that you put it that way about like. All the way, you know, not getting caught up in the technique. Not getting do the technique easy, in but, do the yeah. technique in the singing lesson. Do it where you're vocalizing with your coach. But when it comes time to actually um, perform, that technique should just be something that supports you. Okay. Your words and your heart and your your belief in the, the story of what you're doing has to be primary. And that's what makes each individual singer or each individual actor so different and, and unique and that's so special because we could all be singing the exact same song, but our life experience coming out in that song in that moment is going to make that, that song, Absolutely that one so. time that you sang it so different than even the next time that you sing mm -hmm. it as the same person. But any other person singing it, you know, that's what we talk about with the kids, you know, say that you're auditioning for different roles or if you, when you audition, you're going out for, you, you walk into a room and there's going to be 20 other people that look almost similar, almost exactly like you. And it's not that you're up against them. It's that what casting directors want to see is what do you bring to that role or what do you mm -hmm. bring to that song? And it is, it's so much based on that, what you have on the inside, your life experience, and then the technique that what you've done to prepare, you know, mm -hmm. and then... When you go in, okay, now it's just time to me, for me to be this and be who I am right here in this space right now. And hopefully you do a good job and they like it. Or, you know, what you, yeah. you were able to express is not a good job. And but. they're all supposed to do that at the age of 10. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, but they can. Yeah, they can. Some do. And they some can. really do an amazing, yeah. The, um, Okay, so uh, we had another, we had a, actually Sean just texted me <laughs> and he said, he said, uh, I, what started her love for the great American songbook? And I said, you know, I was thinking about, we talked about your mother, but was there other influences yeah. Uh, yeah. that, then would you want to talk more about that? Well, um, my father was uh, an extraordinary dancer. Okay. And he came over. My father was uh, 33 years older than my mother oh. when, when I was born. And for the rest of my life, in fact, he stayed 33 <laughs> years older than my mother. I mean, somehow, magically, that magically didn't change. That, right. <laughs> but uh, he had this gr rather grand European uh, aura to him. And because he danced so beautifully and danced with my mother so beautifully, everything to do with dancing was encouraged. Mm. Um, from my going to ballroom dancing school for 10 years when I was little to seeing Fred Astaire pictures and the love that I found for the music that I was dancing to when I was little, the Lester Lannan Orchestra, and those are all standards. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Everything that they, every single thing, every tango, every waltz, every foxtrot, it was all standards. Ah. So ah. I was indoctrinated with standards from a very early age. Then I fell in love with Fred Astaire movies. <laughs> and those are all, you know, that Fred Astaire probably sang more standards than anybody else in the history of motion picture, even though he's a dancer. Uh -huh. yeah. He introduced more standards to... And to uh, to history than anybody else. So I was just absolutely besotted with Fred Astaire when I was young. So that is where it all began. And of course, my mother's repertoire being right there and ready mm -hmm. yeah. and uh, going to music school and all the other wonderful influences that I had. The, you mentioned the uh, Fred Astaire. And it, going back into like the early movies like that, you were talking... This was, you know, a time in history when the the movie musical would also be supported by the songs that were being there would be played on the on the radio. Oh yeah. So a lot of, you know, like you're saying, you know, he introduced some, you know, Fred, 
Fred Astaire was introducing these songs, and then people would be listening to them. They, people would be singing them. People would be, you know, this was like the and the they'd be playing them culture. over on your piano. Yes, yeah. and play yeah. exactly. So it's like over and over again. You're, it's, Which is, this is what it used to say on the sheet music. <laughs> Try this over on uh, your piano. Oh, I love it. <laughs> Try this over on your piano. Right. Um, that that may, uh, yesterday, I think I, for some reason this popped into my mind, and it was so. Uh, interesting you said Fred Astaire today because I thought of the Ginger Rogers quote you know where it was uh, he did it, she did everything that he did except backwards, backwards and, and in, in high heels, heels. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely uh-huh. that is such a great she was quote extraordinary was ex- extraordinary yes yeah. oh. um, so you talked about the uh, the repertoire and, and your father and the other where did you go once you decided that you were this was something you wanted to do did you the schooling and you mentioned music well, school well I studied a lot in my childhood I went to Diller Quayle School of Music when I was growing up so mm-hmm. after school I would walk up another 10 blocks and go to 94th Street where there was um, fierce teachers <laughs> <laughs> my piano teacher was named Miss Weed <laughs> and boy did she look at she really? scared the pants off me. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, I went to college and I majored in drama. Wonderful. At, uh, mm-hmm. But for only one year. Because in the middle of that year, I met someone who put me on the Merv Griffin show. And wow. it, it killed me. I mean, it was, I, it was, yeah. it was done. It was, I was done. You were done at that There was point. no more school right. after that. <laughs> it was time to take off. It was time to audition. And I started in commercials. And mm-hmm. I went on from there. Um, speaking of that, uh, Valerie had some questions regarding uh, students and kids that had. Uh... Yeah. So Josh emailed in a question, and he wants to know um, it wasn't in your acting reel, but what's Tom Selleck like? Oh. You were on the set of Mac <laughs> P.I. Oh. Worked with him a bit. Just the most glorious fella. Oh, and one of the absolute, you know, I've kissed a. Uh-huh. Dozens of, <laughs> I've kissed dozens and dozens of men, but I'm going to be very honest and say that was just the top. <laughs> he couldn't have been nicer. He couldn't have been um, more generous. And not just to me as a fellow actor, mm-hmm. but um, to his whole crew. Hmm. He was uh-huh. the type that really led his ship. That's wonderful. You know, yeah, the the kind of actor that's available to everybody, that's checking the crew, making sure everybody's happy. He he really he really knew how to run a tight ship, and I did two mm-hmm. of those magnums. Hmm. Yeah, I did. I, that was really fun. Mm-hmm. Oh gosh, <laughs> oh gosh. So uh, for kids that might might want to go into acting and singing, mm-hmm. um, or you know what uh, what what type of. Um, advice or suggestions could you give to them that would to follow in your footsteps well train well okay train well make sure that you're getting as much um of the real foundation i mean doing something like this actor's camp is a perfect Mm -hmm. thing to do right and then if it becomes a passion for you stay in school Mm. stay Mm -hmm. in school and train after school um and eventually, there are many different ways in. One of the ways is commercials. Commercials mm-hmm. are, yeah, phenomenal. Aspect. Commercials is a fantastic way to get started. And it, it seems to be, in, in many ways, a little bit more open at first. Yeah, it's a, a, a lot of agents are looking for specifically kids, too. But it, yeah. even, even adults where they're, mm-hmm. it's like we want that fresh new face, you know, somebody that hasn't been seen yet. Because commercials nowadays are really going for the everyman. They they want right. you know this what looks and there have been a number of actors who have gotten um, ahead. There's, yeah. a, there's mm-hmm. a fellow who has a series right now, um, off the boat or whatever it is. And, oh and yeah, fresh yeah. off the boat. Yeah, F-O-B, he started yeah. in a commercial. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and just it, it just mm-hmm. went from there. He got another commercial, another commercial, another commercial, and then boom. Mm-hmm. Then he was on. Yeah, there he series. is. Yeah, and and he was. Uh, he was also the is it the lead uh, that you're talking about in FOB? I'm trying to think of his yeah. name, but uh, he was also in. Uh, he played the Kim Jong Un role in the James Franco. Yes, right. Oh, yes. The yeah. interview. right. The interview. But That's I it. remember yes. noticing him, him in a from commercial. A commercial, yeah. About three years ago. That's great. Yeah. And he was very noticeable. Oh, now I have to find his name. Oh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> I'm gonna. Time right. for the googling. Right. <laughs> well, we can go to some more questions to, from yes, kids. Of course. 
Um, so you have worked with a lot of well-known people, um, very accomplished actors. Who is your favorite to work with or favorite set to work on? This is from Melanie. Okay. Um, you know, I would never be able to pick a favorite because um, in this day and age of... <laughs> hmm. It would come back to haunt me if I picked a favorite. But <laughs> I had obviously a fantastic time on the Magnum set because they fly you to Hawaii. Yeah. <laughs> La, it's not, not, a bad not a bad place to live <laughs> or work. That was absolutely <laughs> fantastic. I think doing Taxi was one of the finest things that I ever mm -hmm. uh, was able to do. I enjoyed that. They taught me how to be funny. <laughs> they really taxi. did. I had done no comedy at all, and mm. they taught me how to be funny. And uh, working with Danny DeVito was a treat. Yeah. Uh, an unbelievable treat. And just being around them, all of them, they're, they're just such funny people, and learning from them was uh, a sensational experience. And I loved, I loved the show I did, Behringer's, because it was a, a long time when you get to be in a company and you get, I, I got to play a, a, a really rather harsh character. Character, yes. Change yeah. mm -hmm. And wear fabulous clothes and have long nails and, and, <laughs> and, and be on set for months and months mm -hmm. and months, which usually I didn't have the pleasure of doing. I loved working with Michael Caine because he was one of the finest storytellers that I've ever, ever known. Mm -hmm. I loved working with Sir John Gielgud because we were all flown over to um, London and from there Bristol and from <laughs> wow. there Worcester and I was able to bring uh -huh. my mother along. And <laughs> I've had wonderful experiences as an actress and I, I treasure them all, but um, a single favorite um, hard to... is, is almost <laughs> impossible. Yeah. Um, for for those of my age, uh, mm -hmm. I would like to say that I loved growing up and watching. And Jack the Bear was, oh, yeah. I, was a Jack movie. Jack the Bear, that, yeah, mm -hmm. was a movie that um, I remember seeing as a young boy. I mean, well, teenager. Yeah. But mm -hmm. um, because I'm, I'm not as young as I might look. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But no, I, but I remember seeing it as a teenager, and it was like yeah. it was such a beautiful movie, and so so it was very beautiful. I had to be dead in that. Yes, I was going to hear. Yeah. That was so difficult to do. <laughs> you can't believe how difficult it is to quiet down your entire system. I mean, there was a scene in a coffin, and oh. and people are, you know, crying over you and doing all sorts of things that would ordinarily make you giggle like mad. <laughs> and, and you have to completely quiet yourself down and practically not breathe at all. It's a very difficult thing to do. There's not much of a market for that. Right, know? unless yeah. you're it's a not CSI. Like you're, it's, yeah, <laughs> unless, you, unless you, you know, market yourself out to CSI. Can play dead. dead. <laughs> <laughs> Willing to play dead many <laughs> many times over. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but I just remember that more than anything else mm -hmm. because it was so difficult to do. Huh. That's... Uh, uh, and I got so good at it that they yelled lunch <laughs> and I was just still dead. Oh. And then I finally opened my eyes and I scared somebody to death. Because they came <laughs> over to look at you and they thought that... <laughs> and I was really gone. <laughs> I uh, think Meryl Streep did that once in Ironweed, and, and the way she did it was to lie on top of a bag of ice. Oh. Huh. Oh. That seems like that would really... Unfortunately, that would really kill you. Right. <laughs> be an interesting way to make yourself go numb. But she's Let's very go. method. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, Randall Park, I found his name. Randall is the one yeah. from the commercial that you mentioned. He's yeah. so fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah. He's great in the interview, and uh, he's been in quite a bit. He, had, he was in The Neighbors. Uh, right now he's uh, uh, one of the leads on Fresh Off the Boat, which right. is that great uh, television series. Yeah. But, but um, I first noticed him in a, in a commercial in, on TV. On TV. Yeah, and, and uh, we were talking about that going back to the commercials. That looking, f you know, agents are looking for uh, actors or actresses that might be able to come in, and they have a new, uh, they're fresh, they got a new look. There's something about them specifically for kids or people that are in their 20s, 30s, or, or older that are just start starting fresh, yeah. new to acting. That is one way to get into acting that will, you know, they that you don't have to be in the unions. Uh, or the union now, uh, you don't have to uh, have a whole lot of experience because they're willing, you know, commercials go so quickly, yeah. so quickly. And it's a good um, start. It's a great start. And it's a great, uh, 
really amazing way to, to make some money too that can you know pay for those acting classes that you need to take or the vocal classes that it. you want to yes strike it. it's a one in a million shot yes um, let's see other questions from Valerie we have we're actually oh wow we're <laughs> we're getting really close, aren't we? <laughs> we're running we? out of time. I'm sorry. Um, we're not going to be able to get to everyone's questions. Yes, but thank you so much for sending them in. And yeah. for we got a couple of the the, the Twitter. Uh, you know, We love it when you guys uh, tweet to us. We love it when you follow us. We love it when you like us on Facebook. Uh, so you can find us at Young Actors Theater Camp. Um, uh, we are online. We're at www.campyatc.com. Um, at Camp YATC is our Twitter handle. You can find us on Pinterest and uh, Instagram mm-hmm. at Camp YATC. We got all of it. Oh my God, you have to spread yourself so, <laughs> so thin. thin. Well, that's why we have Valerie. On <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, and the videos on YouTube, as Valerie said. Yeah. Um, but uh, thank you, everybody, for coming in and, uh, and, and listening to us live and catching us on the podcast. And a big thank you to Andrea Markovici for coming in. <laughs> And thank you for You're being so here. welcome. It was, it's always <laughs> Thanks a pleasure. Thanks for gathering that crowd. Absolutely. Just <laughs> for me. They followed you yes. in, I saw. It was, yeah. that was, <laughs> yeah. and, they're um, having trouble parking, but, that's they're, true. but they're there. They're there. And um, <laughs> we have another great little video that we're going to send out, uh, send everybody off with. But uh, thanks again for listening, and thanks for being here at YATC Live for the Young Actors Theater Camp. Have See a great day. Week. See you next week. The Young Actors Theatre Camp is home. Family. Amazing. Family. Yaddick is love. Theatrical. Wonderful. Incredible. I would describe it as fun. Camp! If I was to describe YATC, I'd say that you are about to come to an amazing place for 11 days where you will have the most fun of your life learning about acting, singing, dancing, choreographing, directing, improv, scene study, Film Lab, the list goes on and on and on. It's a place that I wished I had had when I was a kid, and that's why we started it. I finally found a spot for my son to be able to be free, who he is, express himself the way he likes to express himself, and not be ridiculed for it. I've learned that I can, like, really be myself. I'm perfect the way I am, and I learned that people can accept me for that, and people will accept me for that. YATC is just a place where you get to hang with your family and do what you love with your family. YATC means to me um, just actors coming together to help each other and to help each other grow as actors and actresses. My favorite class to take at YATC is probably the master classes because you get to work with people who have been in the business and who are famous. To me, YATC really means collaborating with industry professionals to help both parties grow to be better actors, performers, and people. It's a great place to learn, a great place to grow, a great place to have fun and just be yourself. I'm grateful that you have this camp and it's a wonderful experience. She's got a team of mentors now and I feel like she is in great hands whenever she's there. It's really great to be in a place where everyone loves what you love as well because being in high school, not a lot of people like theater as much as I do. To me, the most valuable lesson that I've learned from camp is to be myself and never let anyone tell me anything else. When she came back from the first camp telling me that they got it wrong, that Disneyland was not the happiest place on earth, that Yaddick was truly the happiest place on earth. It's chaotically brilliant in the sense that you have a lot more freedom than you have at different camps, but they structure it in a way so everyone has something to do. We have such amazing choreographers and uh, vocal coaches that it's so cool to see you know, what they can bring out of the kids and what they can bring out of me too, because I like to take the class as well. Each session is a group of people who are getting together to collaborate and do what we love. It's just the most loving, nurturing environment there is. Great friendships, you learn so much. I mean, it's a great experience. Everyone supports you and everyone wants you to do well. This is one of the best experiences I've ever been through and you should definitely go because it's gonna be so much fun. You're going to absolutely love it here. The Young Actors Theater Camp will change your life.